In this video we're going to look at writing numbers in standard form or scientific notation. By writing it in that form it allows us to write really 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 big numbers or really really small numbers in a way that is much more easier to grasp and to compare and it's much more straightforward to write and to work with. So generally we will write numbers that are in scientific or standard form as a number times 10 to the power of something. Just one thing to say about this number, it needs to be in between 1 and 10. Okay, it cannot be bigger than those values there. So, let's see about how we do this in practice. So, if we wanted to write this number, 50, let's go 500,000. We wanted to write that in standard form. What we have to do, to write down like the first A part, we need to write down all the digits from the first non-zero digit up to and including the last non-zero digit. So the first non-zero number here is 5 and there's no more, so I'm not going to write these down. Then what we would do normally is we would put a decimal point in this space here. But because um, I don't have any other values, I'm going to keep this as it is. So to find out, so it's going to be 5 times 10 to the power of something. To find out what this thing in here is going to be, what I need to do is I'm also going to like need to count the spaces that the decimal point will have had to have moved to get to the, just after the first non-zero number. So in this number 500,000, my decimal point would be here. So I am counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I've counted 5 spaces to get to uh, just after the first non-zero number. So it's going to be 5 times 10 to the power of 5. Let's have a look at another number. 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Let's write this in standard form. So my method is I write down all the digits from the first non-zero number up to and including the last non-zero number. So here's the first non-zero number, here's the last one, so I'm going to write these four numbers. So it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4. And it's going to be times 10 to the power of something. Step 2 is I'm going to put a decimal point in between the first and the second number. All I need to do now is I need to count in from the end how many spaces I've had to move to get to this point here. So if we count the spaces, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So it'll be 1.234 times 10 to the power 10. Okay, let's have a look at this question. 54,030. Step 1. Write down all the digits from the first non-zero digit up to and including the last non-zero digit. Here's the first number that's not zero. Here's the last number that's not zero, so I need to write down all of these numbers. So it's going to be 5, 4, 0, oh, 3. And that's going to be times 10 to the power of something. Step 2, I need to put in a decimal point in between the first two numbers. And then I'm just going to count in from the end how many spaces I've moved to get to, to put my decimal place there. So 1, 2, 3, 4. I've moved 4 um, places to move my decimal point. So it's going to be 5.403 times 10 to the power of 4. If we notice that the first few examples that we looked at there, the numbers were really, really big. Now we're going to look at examples where the numbers are really small. We still follow through the same process. We write down all the digits from the first non-zero digit up to and including the last one. So here's the first one, here's the last one. So I'm going to write down 3, 2. That's going to be times 10 to the power of something. I now need to count how many spaces my decimal point has to move. So it's moving 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's going to be to the power of 4. But because, I've, because this is a small number, because I've had to count to the right, it's going to be times 10 to the power of negative 4. 
Also one thing I forgot to do there is put a decimal point in between the first non-zero number and the second non-zero number. Have a look at one more example, 0 0.053090. Step one, write down all the non-zero, uh, write, write down the first non-zero digit up to and including the last non-zero digit. So I'm going to write down these numbers here. So it's going to be 5309. It's going to be times 10 to the power of something. Step 2. Put a decimal point in between the first and second number. Step 3. Count how many spaces I've had to move. I've had to move 1, 2. It's a small number. So it's going to be times 10 to the minus 2. If we were asked the reverse of this question, if we were asked to write um, something as an ordinary number, if we were given it in scientific notation, how would we do that? So we would write down the first part, so it's 2, and what this is telling us is this is telling us how many spaces the decimal point is moved from here. So it's moved 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So my decimal point would go in here. What you then just have to do is fill in the spaces with zeros. And it would be point zero. We obviously wouldn't write point zero. So to just simplify this, this would be 200,000. So you write down your A part, you write down the standard form part, but you don't write the decimal point. Then, because this was 5, this told me that I have jumped 5 spaces. So you then fill the zeros within those spaces, and you wouldn't include the point zero in this case. Okay, here I've been asked to write the number 5.4032 times 10 to the power of 6 as an ordinary, ordinary number. So I need to write down all the non-zero numbers first. So it's 5, 4, 0, 3, 2. Just do like what you would normally do. Then I have been told that I have to move six spaces from here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. My decimal point is going to go in here. All I need to do now is fill my spaces with zeros. And this would be a point zero. I'm not going to write that though, because no point writing uh, point zero. Uh, this is our number in standard form. Okay, last one. We're just going to convert this to an ordinary number. So, what we need to do is we need to write down our non-zero numbers. And we're told that it's to the power of minus 3. That means I'm moving 3 places. But because it's a minus, I'm moving 3 places to the left this time. So we're moving 1, 2, 3. So the decimal point is going to go in here. Add in zeros. And this time we are going to include the zero to start with. Because you can't just have point zero zero. You would have 0, 0.00. And just to simplify this, 0 0.002030. Remember, you can just check your answer, making sure that if you checked what this was in standard form, it should match up with our question. Thank you.